In tonight's reading, you are invited to go deeper. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Memorial Day, Monday, the 29th of May, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we begin our, our well, end our day at the beginning of this week with God's Word and prayer. Hope you've had a good Memorial Day. Hope you have uh, taken a, a moment to to uh, remember and honor those who have served our country and especially those who have given their lives. Uh, certainly tremendously blessed by them and their service and their sacrifice. Uh, this now is week 22, day one of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Acts chapter 17. So Paul and Barnabas are well into their missionary journeys. They've made one trip already. Now they're going back out again uh, to continue to spread the gospel. And we'll, we'll uh, get to see a little bit about their approach to that, both, uh, well, in, in two different contexts, how they approached that task of preaching the gospel. So let's turn to our text. And when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city's authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him, as soon as possible, they departed. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of a foreign, uh, a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. 
So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of, Ath Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an, an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own po poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst, but some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysius, Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Thus far Acts chapter 17. So here we see one of the better known examples of Paul preaching. We have, a, in some respects, a more full description here of his message than we have in many other cases. In fact, we see the two approaches that he took. The first was going to the synagogue and declaring to the Jews that Jesus was the fulfillment of all that they believed in. And as you heard, some believed, others rejected. And then we see Paul here in Athens at the Areopagus. Uh, and this message is especially noteworthy because he shows a, uh, just a, a a cleverness in presenting the gospel that is absolutely worth studying. He uses this altar to an unknown God as sort of a, a foothold, a starting point for presenting to the people of Athens in a more accessible way, in a way that they are more likely to hear. Uh, he uses it in, a, in that way uh, to, to gain a hearing for the gospel. And so here, there, this is a great example of, of the benefit of potentially studying uh, how to share your faith better. Now, Paul obviously did not have any formal training in evangelism, but at the same time, he does show a great skill in doing it. And so there is certainly a place for you and I in sort of refraining, uh, not refraining, refining our presentation of the gospel, learning how to communicate it in effective ways that your hearers will hear and understand. 
uh, and even techniques for addressing common, uh, common objections, for example. We call that apologetics. There is a great benefit from those kind of studies. But at the same time, it always has to do and has to serve the purpose that Paul always served with his preaching. That is, to persuade people by the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. So, this is a, the best example of the benefits of really studying carefully our approach to evangelism, our approach to witnessing, especially since it keeps the central, the most key, the most important part of that presentation at the very heart, and that is the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. I thank you as always for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you tomorrow at this same time. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.